as if we were ashamed to belong to your son. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. May God, the Father Almighty, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring us his pardon and peace now and forever. Amen. And before we um, sing, um, before we say the jubilante, if Adrian's ready, there is a piece of music for you to listen to. Um, and I know we can't sing, but there's nothing to stop us standing up, clapping, or raising our hands in praise. So, as you feel comfortable. Thank you. 
escapes our thanksgiving and his thoughts of praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is gracious, his steadfast love is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, and as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And on to that song of joy, the song of Ezekiel, where God said, You shall be my people, and I will be your God. So the song of Ezekiel that sang all that together as well. I will take you from the nations and gather you from the fortress. I will spread clean water upon you, and you shall be clean from all your ugliness. A new heart I will give you, and put a new spirit within you, and I will remove from your body the heart of stone. Give you a heart of flesh. You shall be my people, and I will be your God. So we say again Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And now we come to a time of, of reading our song. And it's Psalm 13, and I thought perhaps we could read this all together, it is a short psalm. So, together. How long, oh Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts, and day after day have sorrow in my heart? How long will my enemy triumph? Look on me and answer, Lord my God. Give light to my eyes, or I will sleep in death. And my enemy will say, I have overcome my enemy, and I will fear the fortress of my fall. For I will trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing the Lord's praise. And now Andy is going to come talk to us about that song. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, you can hear me. Very good morning to you all. It's, uh, it's wonderful to be able to share a few thoughts from this song with you this morning. Uh, so shall we pray as we, as we start? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for this psalm and its, and its honesty. We pray this morning that you will speak to us through it. Lord, that we will uh, learn from you this day. In the name of Jesus. Amen. How long, Lord? Will you forget me forever? How long will you hide? your face from me. King David, the psalmist, shares um, words of, of anguish and pain. And I wonder how many of us can, can, can confess today that, that we too have, have felt the same at times. I know there have been times in my own life when I've cried out to God. I remember one particular time when I, I fell to my knees saying to God, where are you? I need help. Do you not know what I'm going through? Where are you, God? And David, he, he, he speaks these words, doesn't he? He, he, he asks God these, these old questions. Questions that clearly come from his pain. We don't know the specifics of what he was feeling at the time, what, what the circumstances were, but clearly he was crying out to God, it, almost with words that were uh, they were irre irreverent. He's really, he's really pouring himself out. He's really being honest with God. I wonder how many of us would dare to, to question God almost in this, in this kind of way that David does. 
we read in the press and we see in the news uh, celebrities or politicians or whoever it might be kind of mocking Christianity, mocking God, mocking our faith. And one particular example is uh, Stephen Fry. You've probably heard some of the things that he said in the past, particularly how he said, uh, how, how can God allow such evil and suffering in the world? When I stand before God, I'll, I'll ask him a few questions. I'll demand answers from him. It's almost laughable, isn't it? The kind of the, the, the hubris of such things. The kind of dare that you would stand before the creator of all things and demand answers. We will indeed all stand before God one day. And in fact, we will kneel before him, willingly or not. We will confess that he's indeed Lord and the creator of all things. And on that day, I don't think we'll be demanding anything of God, <laughs> demanding any kind of answers, as, as some might suggest. And David, he speaks this kind of openness, this, this boldness to God. And, and verse 3 says, look on me and answer God. Is King David being another Stephen Fry here? I don't think so. I don't think so. Because David, King David, the psalmist, has something that Stephen Fry has not got. But with something which you and I have. He has intimacy and he has security. So let's think about those two things for a moment. King David can be open and honest with God because he has intimacy <coughs> with God. He has a relationship with God. All those years he spent on the hills with the sheep that's gazing up at the stars, talking to God about uh, all the things he had in his heart, writing songs, singing praises, looking up at the stars and the wonders of creation. In those years, David, he would have developed his relationship with God. He would have developed that, that knowledge of who God is and drew, uh, drew close to God in that way. When we have a closeness, when we have a relationship with someone, we can say things to them that we might not ordinarily say to someone else. So, for example, I can't go into the supermarket, walk up to a complete stranger and say, I'm not keen on that outfit. I don't really think that shirt goes with those trousers. You might want to think about changing it. If I do that to a complete stranger, what kind of reaction do you think I would get? It wouldn't be good, would it? Yet, if I had a close friend, and a close friend walked in with, I don't know, a blue shirt and green trousers, I might be able to say to them, you might want to think about changing top or trousers today. Uh, not that I'm the, uh, I'm the best to advise on colour choices or, uh, or outfits, but you see the example. Many a time, my close friends or family advise me on my colour choices. <laughs> but that intimacy, that friendship, that closeness allows us to speak into people lives and to be open with them in a way that we might not do with strangers. So this example here, these words of David crying out, ask God how long will you go through this situation? As he lists out the different things that he's facing, as he asks questions of God, says, look, answer God, where are you? He does that from a position of intimacy. But equally, he comes from a place of security. He can speak to God and ask God to be honest with God because he has security with him, security in that relationship. In many ways, security is, is the other side of the coin from intimacy. He draws the security from that intimacy because he knows who God is. He knows that God isn't going to be easily offended or easily angered by David's words. If David had that kind of security, how much more do we have security with God? We who have put our faith in Jesus Christ, trusted in him, we who know that God came down as a man, lived and died for each one of us, how much more secure can you and I feel when we approach God? And that gives us the ability to be open and to be honest with God, to pour out our heart, pour out our feelings before him. We can be Secure. And we have the promise of Hebrews 4 that we can walk boldly with confidence to God's throne. And we know what we will find there is grace and his mercy. So we can 
ask God such questions. We can be honest with God. We can tell him how we feel. One of the big take-home messages for today is that when we read this psalm, as we see David's words, is that when you're in pain, when you're hurting, when you're suffering, you can talk to God about that. I haven't always enjoyed the psalms. Sometimes I struggle with them. I tend to gravitate towards the, the, the New Testament letters, the instruction, practical things that I can do something with. And sometimes the psalms I've struggled with in the past. The emotion, the feeling, and the... the um, yeah, the, the, they're not necessarily practical the letters of instruction, are they? There's sometimes songs just expressing how we are feeling. And this is an example of one such thing today. But the thing that we can learn from that is that we can talk to God and we can be honest. We too have the same intimacy and the security that David had to tell him how we feel. And what we have that David didn't have is that we know that God knows how we feel. Not just in some abstract way, but that he came down. That he was born and he lived a life and he suffered. He went through the kind of pain that we all go through. The first four verses of this psalm is David <coughs> questioning, asking. Almost, it sounds almost like complaining, doesn't it? But, but he's not complaining to someone else about God. He's talking directly to God. He's embracing that relationship he has. But when we come to verse 5, this psalm turns a completely different direction, doesn't it? Verse 5 begins with a little word, but. But. And all the truths of verses 1 to 4, all the pain that David felt, all the anguish he's going through, the tragedy, he turns, doesn't he? He turns it around. He doesn't dismiss the truths of verses 1 to 4, but he knows that there are greater truths. I want us to focus on those today. But, he says, but, despite all of everything that I've just said, but, I trust in your unfailing love. David trusted God. He trusted the love that he had. He knew that despite all the circumstances, all the things that he was going through, he could trust that God loved him. And David could only look to the future and again, for us, no matter what we're going through, no matter the pain or the circumstances that we face, maybe financial problems, health problems, maybe it's mental health problems, whatever it might be, whatever we're facing, we can be absolutely assured that God loves us. He proved that at the cross of Calvary. So no matter what you're going through, you can know that it's not because God does not love you. They have trusted in that unfailing love. And if we put our trust in Jesus Christ, we too can rest assured in that love. And David goes on to say, I will rejoice, rejoice in your salvation. And I wonder what kind of salvation David had in mind exactly. Because if we review verses 1 to 4, we see that David talked about um, his enemies. Maybe it's a circumstantial salvation he's looking for. Maybe he's looking for a rescue from those enemies who would look to destroy him or mock him. Maybe it's a physical thing. Maybe he's looking for physical salvation. Talking about the light dimming in his eyes. Maybe clearly he's, he's in some kind of physical torment. Maybe he's looking for some kind of physical salvation. But equally, maybe it's a, a, a mental salvation. He talks about wrestling with his thoughts and sorrow in his heart. Maybe he's looking for some kind of salvation like that. Perhaps that's true of all of us too. But there is also a greater salvation, an eternal salvation that we can achieve by looking to Christ, by putting our trust and faith in him. Life can be tough. It can be difficult at times. Life can be good and it can be bad. It can be, for most of us, a mix of both things, good and bad. But no matter how bad this life gets, no matter how difficult it can be, it can be at times, we can trust in eternity. And even if this life is truly awful, 
we have an eternity in heaven, which is indeed ample compensation by placing our trust in the one who died for each of us. David doesn't dismiss the truths of verses 1 to 4, but he changes his focus away from his problems and onto his God. And we can do the same. I say that carefully because it's not to say that the pain isn't unreal or that the pain doesn't matter, because of course it does. The pain of this life very much matters to us all. But there is something else to focus on, something beyond, an eternity to focus on. In Colossians 3, Paul writes that we should set our minds, some translations render it, set our minds and keep them set on the things that are above and not on the things that are below. We can focus not on the problems of this life, but on the eternal God who saves us. And as I say, even if this life has nothing to offer us but pain and trouble, I hope, I hope not. But if that is all we can offer, we know that heaven is a wonderful place. To be with our God for all eternity is far greater than any trouble or suffering we can in this life. So David concludes his psalm, these six short verses, by saying that he should sing and praise the Lord. And while we can't sing in church today because of COVID, we can sing in our homes, and we can sing in our hearts. And the more we focus on God and His goodness, the more we can sing His praise in this life. When people look at us and look at the trouble we face, and yet we're still singing in one way or another, they ask the question, where do you get your strength from? How can you be happy and joyful in the midst of your service? And the answer is because we fixed our lives in Jesus Christ. So we can sing as David closes in his final word, because God has indeed been good to us all. So we take home from this psalm today that we can be honest. We can pour out our hearts with God. We can ask him the questions because we know he's a big enough God to take our questions and to answer them. And even if it seems at times that the answer is not coming, we can trust that God loves us. We can trust that God is near us. We can trust and rejoice in his salvation. And that's not to dismiss our problems, but to know that there's something greater and something beyond. So I encourage you to go home and to sing. Sing praises to the Lord today, no matter what's going on in your life, to trust in Him, to remember His love and to remember His salvation, and to remember that He has indeed been good to us all. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much that we can indeed be honest with you. That even when we don't understand the problems that we face, you know that you are indeed in complete control. Even if we don't understand why we're going through such pain or suffering, Lord, we know that you love us. And we today rejoice in the salvation you offer us. We thank you for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, to live and to die for us. And we put again our trust in him. And we look forward to eternity with you. We rejoice and we give you thanks today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Andy. That's given us a lot to think about. It's a full lot of encouragement, isn't it? Because we all have our problems and that's wonderful to think in that way that yes, through them all we can sing the Lord's praises and if you get home by 11 o'clock you can actually do that because there'll be a YouTube on, there'll be a guest speaker 
and there'll be music and there'll be lots of song. So you can sing your praises at home. So, shall we stand and say the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please do be seated, and we come to now to a short time of prayer. And a special prayer set aside for this Sunday, the Collect. Lord of heaven and earth, as Jesus taught his disciples to be persistent in prayer, give us patience and courage never to lose hope, but always to bring our prayers before you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And I do have a, a special prayer here. Um, written by Josie Kennard. Some of you here might know her, but she worships at St John's mostly. And she wrote this with um, people in mind who are still having trouble getting out because of this pandemic, and they're still confined to home. Dear Lord, be with us all in our solitude and isolation. Give us courage and strength of heart and mind to enable us to put our faith and trust in you in our hours of need, knowing that at all times you are near to us. Let your peace guide our hearts to look out for the needs of the poorly friends and families around us. We will wait and rest in the knowledge that in all our troubles, fears and anxieties you are there to comfort and guide us. Keep our hearts open, Lord. Keep our eyes open, Lord. And keep our ears open, Lord, to help, listen and act when needed, so that we are always ready to do that which you have taught us. In your name, dear Lord. Amen. So let us pray to our Father God, as David did. Let us take our needs and the needs of others to his seat of mercy. Father, whenever your church has become short-sighted, inattentive or straying, work in your healing love. Father, whenever our nations have lost their way, their sense of human worth or their integrity, nourish them with your love and show them a better way. Father, whenever our relationships are fragmented or shallow or offensive to you, challenge us with your love. Father, wherever people are suffering, whether physically, mentally, emotionally or spiritually, and there are so many in our world today, Lord, Comfort them with your love and heal their hurts. Father, whenever people are fearful of or anxious for the future, reassure them with your tender love and care. And Father, we pray now for those on our prayer lists or known to us personally that need your help, compassion and healing. In silence, we remember them now, Lord. And so, Father, wherever your will 
is being fulfilled, or hearts are learning to trust your love, we join you in your joy. Open our eyes, Father, to the light of your glory in the world you have made and in the people around us, and in the face of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And shall we close by saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And a concluding prayer. May the Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And shall we share in the grace? So the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore.